In keeping with the theme of the basic electronics content I've been recently reissuing, I'm going to do a quick demonstration of using an ohmmeter to troubleshoot a basic electrical circuit. As you are no doubt aware, ohmmeters are instruments used to measure the resistance of an electrical circuit. Beyond a numerical assessment of a specific resistance value, on a very basic level, ohmmeters can be used to check whether something is electrically connected or not. This is referred to as a continuity test. Something connected has a low resistance value, whereas something not connected has an infinite or over-limit resistance value. Electrical circuits require continuity to function. Electrical problems largely are the result of two occurrences, one being inadvertent opens or loss of connection, and the other what I'm calling other problems, these other problems being any problem not associated with an open. As this graphic is intended to illustrate, a lot of problems can be traced to a loss of connection, either some wire that's fallen off or broken half, such that no complete circuit exists. Now I know some of the content I've published at the Big Bad Tech channel might seem heavy in the math, examples being the transient analysis of the capacitor charge and discharge cycle, sinusoidal properties and phasor representation, power factor correction, and three-phase AC circuit analysis, but when you get right down to it, one of the most fundamental properties is connection, and it doesn't take a degree in electronics and fancy math to tell if something is connected or not. Sometimes it doesn't even take instrumentation. Just look at it. Trace the wires from source to load and back to find the open. Oftentimes the open is a screw that wasn't properly tightened down or one that just backed out over time. This is especially true for circuits subject to regular vibrations or extreme environments. An example being an industrial wind turbine where electrical circuits are routinely subject to cold, heat, all sorts of nasty weather and habitually spun at 22 to 25 RPM, 100 meters above the ground. Here's an example of a contactor a type of heavy-duty electrical switch with a false connection on one of the three phases in a three-phase AC system. It might look like it's connected, however close visual inspection of the system shows that one of the screws is not tight all the way down and the wire isn't making a positive connection but rather dangling around out in space. The loss of a single phase results in the motor making an unusual growling sound, failing to rotate, and the overload element eventually disabling the system. Even if you don't know what three-phase AC is, nor how ladder logic governs the operational state of this contactor and the motor under its direction, just look at it. It's immediately evident there is a loss of connection. Lock it out, tag it out, tighten it up, and return it to service. Problem solved. If a continuity problem extends beyond the capability of simple visual inspection, an ohmmeter can be used to check whether electrical continuity exists or not. Given a large proportion of electrical problems result from loss of connections, this means a large percentage of these problems are solvable, necessitating very little training. Let this be a small consolation for those individuals that routinely struggle with some of the more advanced content or for those individuals new to electrical circuit analysis. You don't need to know Thevenin's theorem. You don't need to know phasor math. You don't even need to wear pants. All you need to know is how to use an ohmmeter. Allow me to demonstrate by way of a simple example. Consider the leopard gecko. The Wikipedia entry for leopard gecko says they're metaternal ground-dwelling lizards naturally found in the highlands of Asia, throughout Afghanistan, and parts of northern India. I know this to be a falsehood. Leopard geckos were actually invented by Fluker's Cricket Farm for the purposes of selling crickets to parents whose children have convinced them a leopard gecko would make a great pet. Moms and dads, listen up. The lizard is free. The crickets aren't. Leopard geckos, in addition to their voracious appetite for crickets, necessitate a stable, warm environment. Often, this comfortable environment is provided in the form of heat mats or heat lamps. One day, the heat lamp for my son's lizard just stopped working. I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to demonstrate how to troubleshoot the heat lamp using an ohmmeter. Lamps are simple enough to conceptualize because there's not a lot to go wrong. There's a source, a switch, a means of distribution, including the wires and socket, and an electrical load in the form of a bulb. The gecko's tank sits inside my son's bedroom and is repeatedly subjected to all manners of pillow fights gone wrong, impromptu jujitsu and stick biting parties, and errant nerf bullets, so my initial suspicion was a broken filament inside the bulb. However, the bulb didn't exhibit the characteristic sound of a broken filament sliding around. It could still be broken, however, I can't see inside it. Time to use the ohmmeter. The ohmmeter demonstrates continuity exists through the bulb sleeve to the button, such that it presents a roughly 33 ohm path. The bulb is not at fault. Something else is either the source, the switch, or the means of distribution. The source is immediately ruled out from consideration since other electrical devices plugged into the same outlet function. The problem therefore exists in the switch 
or the distribution system, none of which is immediately visible to the naked eye. Time to use the ohm meter. Our job is to find the unintentional open somewhere inside the path from the functioning source to the functioning bulb. Two-bladed plugs often feature an oversized blade intended for the grounded neutral connection and a smaller blade for the hot line connection. Customarily, the collar of a light bulb socket receives the neutral connection and the bottom terminal of the bulb socket receives the line connection. The switch on the line side serves to make or break connection to the line conductor leading to the socket. This is known as a high side switching arrangement. With a bulb inserted, switch open, no circuit exists, and no current flows. Switch closed, a circuit does exist, and current flows through the bulb. An ohmmeter checking the path from the line blade on the plug to the bottom terminal of the bulb socket demonstrates an open or no connection exists. One of two things is happening here. Either we've found the unintentional open or the switch is open. Only one way to find out. Toggle the switch. The ohmmeter demonstrates now connection is made from the line blade to the bottom terminal. This proves two things. One, there exists a complete conductive path from the line blade to the bottom terminal of the socket. And two, the switch works. We are clearly making and breaking connection. If the switch was at fault, we'd see the loss of continuity regardless of the status of the switch. In this case, the switch seems to be doing its job quite well. The only other place the problem can exist is inside the neutral blade to socket collar conductor. The ohmmeter checking the path from the larger neutral blade on the plug to the socket collar demonstrates an open or no connection exists regardless of the status of the switch. Here's our problem. Now we can start digging. Really, there's only a limited number of places to dig, one of the most obvious being below the ceramic socket collar. When we remove the ceramic socket collar, we find the neutral wire is corroded to the point of failure and broken. There's our open. Clean and strip the wires and re-land them on the socket terminals and return the lamp to service. I now return you to your fast-paced life of sleeping a majority of the day and eating crickets in your nice warm house. While we've got the ohmmeter here, let's check the state of the switch just for the heck of it. We know it works, however the switch is really the only other possible point of failure in this system, so we might as well take a look at it, see how it works, and discuss how it might fail to function. When we open the switch housing, we see a rocker button that toggles back and forth the state of flexible metal contact that makes and breaks connection from the line side of the source to the load. An ohmmeter demonstrates continuity does not exist through the switch when in the open state. When we toggle the switch, it holds the flexible metal contact down and makes connection. An ohmmeter demonstrates continuity does exist through the switch when in the closed state. A switch like this might fail to make connection if there was an insulating obstruction, like a rock, a piece of plastic, or a booger in the way. Conversely, a switch like this might fail to break connection if there was a conductive obstruction, like a screw or some other metal object, jammed between the contacts. Alright, that about wraps it up for this quick demonstration of how to use an ohmmeter to troubleshoot a simple electrical device. Yes, I admit, it was not the most complicated of systems, nor the most complicated troubleshooting scenarios, nor was it meant to be. My only intention was to demonstrate that most common troubleshooting problems like open circuits take attention to detail and failing visual inspection, your willingness and ability to use an ohmmeter. Connection must exist in an electrical circuit, and the only way to tell if something is truly connected or not is to use an ohmmeter. It's not that hard, and it's well within the capacity of most adults to learn this skill. Don't assume something broken is beyond your capacity to fix. If there's a moral to this story, let it be this.